Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov2 as usual and today I've got something really special lined up for you guys. This is the patch 9.0 test server, the first build of it, which went up yesterday I believe. And there are some really, really cool features in this patch. Actually, in my opinion, this is probably the best patch ever except for the physics patch, which... I'm not, I'm, I'm actually not quite sure which patch that was, maybe you can let me know in the comments, but I mean that, that physics patch really, uh, you know, revolutionised the World of Tanks gameplay, but this patch here is so, so good too, so um, stay tuned and I'll tell you all about the changes. Now, one of the great things that I think is happening in this patch is that they've stopped adding new tanks, like, they haven't got any new tank line, I mean, they've got two or three new vehicles in this game, but it's nothing spectacular, it's just lower tier vehicles, and generally, they haven't added all that much new stuff, as far as vehicles are concerned, but they've done incredible work on the game mechanics, on the graphics, and stuff like that, and you can see it straight away, you can really see the difference. Uh, this here is nearly maximum graphic settings and I'm getting excellent frame rates here so um, yeah this is just amazing and the lighting effects the shadows the, the contrast is just so much clearer and so much more realistic I really really like this patch so yeah I'm just going to quickly show you uh, some of the new tank models like the way they look now in the new garage you can also see this new garage here I'm not sure whether this is only the premium garage or if you also get it as a standard garage because I've got a premium account anyway on my live server account so I can't really tell but I think it's probably standard garage too but I'm not sure so yeah you can just really see this amazing graphical work look at the lighting of this SU 100 M1 it's just so so cool yeah, look at the, the Yak Panther, oh, this is really cool, look look at this, I mean it looks so so much better, in actual fact what I'll do here is I'll be showing you a picture of this tank here on the live server the way it is right now in the game, now, and just compare that to what it looks on the test server, it's just so much better, and you know, this is just, they haven't nearly completed the work on this patch yet so this is just a very very early build and it's still going to be even better before it goes live so yeah i'm just so excited for this patch just you know take a load of this it looks so so good here the t1 to n5 the t18 look at that it just looks like a totally new game let's see show you some of the french tanks the amx 1390 12t and the Fosh. Look at that. I mean, I must say that I think the colours are, in some cases, they are a bit too rich. And in some cases, I think it's a bit too light, like on the Fosh. I I think that the colours are too light. But maybe they're going to change that still. But, I mean, just I mean, that's just a minor thing. And, I mean, really, just look at it. It's amazing. The black prints. Uh, oh, my. I could just go on like this forever it's so so cool look at the japanese tank the greens like so much more realistic so much cooler i really really like this patch and um so this these changes in the way the tanks look are down to pbs um, being added to the tanks which is a physically based shadowing so i'm not quite um familiar with the technical terms of what that exactly means but the only thing that really counts for me is that it looks amazing and <laughs> i just really can't wait to see this patch going live and the fact that it's still going to be better before it goes live that they're going to keep on improving this stuff throughout the year 2014 is just so so good another great news is that they've added hd models to three tanks which have a t54 the tiger one the m4 sherman and they've really dramatically increased the amount of polygons on the models of these three tanks. And uh, look at the amount of detail here. Look, look at the engine deck back here. Look at this machine gun. <laughs> you know, the crazy thing is you can, look, you can even see the rifling inside the gun barrel. This is like, if you would compare this with like the earliest versions of World of Tanks, it's just, you know, it's so, so much better. 
seriously, go out there on YouTube or on Google Pictures and, you know, get a look at some pictures of the first versions of World of Tanks, compare it to this. It's just, oh my days. And here's the really cool one. This is the Tiger 1. I really can't believe it. Look at the level of detail. Look at the tracks and the, the drive wheels and these exhaust pipes back here. Look, they've even got scratches on the tank and oh my days. Look, the, the cables and whatever. It looks so, so good. And again, we've got the, the, the amazing amount of detail here, the rifling and oh gosh. This is so, so sexy. And here we go, this is the M4 Sherman, the third tank with HD modelling, and um, yeah, it also looks really impressive. I'll be again flashing up a, a, a screenshot of this tank in my standard garage on the live server. Uh, just check out the difference, this is so, so good. Uh, I know I'm saying this far too often, but you know, it's, it's such an amazing patch, such an amazing improvement. I, I'm really so, so glad that they finally come around to doing this. And I think it's really good that they've stopped adding new tanks as well and have actually focused on improving the game itself or the graphics and the way it looks. And, you know, they've done all kinds of stuff. They've, like, in-game on the maps, they've introduced the PBS too, the physically based shadowing. So that will improve the, the way the maps look as well and now if you drive for example through a wall or a little fence you will actually see the little fragments in which the fence, fence breaks down into when you drive through it and you know they'll be uh, basically all the little bits and pieces will be flying up into the air and it will be re it's just it looks really good i'll show you in some of the gameplay probably and yeah just just look at the tracks of this m4 sherman it looks so realistic. That's not all they've done though, because they've also introduced that if you blow up a tank's ammo rack, its turret will blow off, and it will be lying on the ground somewhere. And it can actually still be—it's actually a physical object, so the tank won't just drive through the enemy's turret. But you can actually use the turret to take cover behind, like for example, hide your lower glaciers. So, for example, imagine you're in an E100 and you can hide your lower glaciers behind for example another tank's turret which has been blown off that's that's really going to change the gameplay and I think that's really cool too but there have been some other minor changes made to the game which are for example that the maps Malinovka, Serene Coast, Steps, Redshire and Mountain Pass have been reworked which I think is quite interesting because if you think of it Redshire and Steps for example have only been reworked in the last patch I think so. Yeah, that they're reworking it again is quite interesting. I haven't actually had any games on any of those maps yet so far, so I can't really say how the changes are, but it's to uh, ensure gameplay balance on both spawns and stuff like that. They've also removed confrontation mode, so if we go to the settings window, uh, and to the general window, we can see that you cannot select confrontation anymore as a game mode down here. and. I personally really didn't like confrontation, I had a few confrontation battles and what I didn't like about it was that it just was absolutely unbalanced. For example, if you got into a tier 6 game with, for example, your German tier 6 heavy tank, the VK3601H, and then you had to go up against tanks like the KV1S and the SU100 with your tier 7 75mm pack gun which was just absolutely unbalanced and you basically didn't stand a chance and then in higher tier games for example if your team had loads of E100s and the enemy team had lots of T125s it was quite clear who would come out on top so I think uh, that game mode wasn't very good and it really showed how unbalanced actually lots of tanks are and that's why I'm not sorry to see it go but I really don't understand why they removed it because if you don't like the game mode you could just deactivate it in the settings window and you never have to play a confrontation battle again so I'm not, maybe it's just for PR purposes because playing confrontation games really just showed how unbalanced lots of tanks in the game are, like for example the KV-1S, and maybe like new players didn't know how to deactivate confrontation and then they would get really frustrated, I'm not sure, but yeah that's kind of, uh, that, I think that's kind of a reason, yeah. 
and um, also they've got a new graphics window as we can see here so this is quite cool because for example now you can uh, select a color filter here and it will actually give you kind of a a test screenshot in which you can see how it will look with a color filter and then you can uh, change the efficiency of the filter yeah so to how much percent the filter will apply and then you've got the you've got the screen window where you can change that kind of stuff and then you've got the details window and they've made this a lot easier to operate because they've got these kind of bars and you can just kind of drag the bar along to where you want to have it so that's quite cool uh, the old window was alright but this is just a lot better especially for new players probably so yeah I think that's nice so yeah that's more or less it there's only one last change left that I have to tell you about and that's probably the biggest change and except for the map change is probably the only actual change that will affect the gameplay and then obviously turrets blowing off will also affect the gameplay but what I'm talking about is historical battles now um, you can select historical battles down here in this window here, you just have to hit it. And I think it's just huge that they've introduced this game mode because they've been talking about it for ages now, like for, for years, literally years. And uh, they've never introduced it yet, but now it's there. And I think, I really like historical battles. I think they've got a lot of potential, but they've still got to do a lot of work on them, I think. And at the moment, you've got the choice between three scenarios up here. You can choose the battle of course, uh, more specifically the battle at Prokhorovka, which obviously takes place on the map Prokhorovka. And um, yeah, you will probably know that the battle of Kursk was like the biggest tank battle ever in history. So uh, that's quite obvious that they've got this, um, this game mode in here. And then you've also got the battle at Lake Balaton, which is set on Erlenburg. Uh, which is a game between the Russians and the Germans and then you've got the Ardennes offensive uh, which is the Germans against the Americans and if you look at the lineups of tanks here you will be able to see that it's actually usually quite unbalanced for the Germans because you've got stuff like Tiger 2s and if we go to the Lake Balaton battle we can see that the Germans even get a Yak Tiger and you've got for example Yak Tigers going up against T-34s and T-34-85s and even Su-76s so you will think boy this this game mode is really unbalanced but they kind of balance it with numbers so what it, that basically means is that you've got for example two Yak Tigers and the Panther against maybe three T-34s and IS and ISE-152 and two T-34-85s or something like that so you've got loads more Russian tanks than German tanks in these game modes and I think that's very interesting because it means that you have to rethink tactics because for example if you play the Germans I've made the experience that you have to usually play more defensively I mean I haven't had that many historical battles so maybe I'm just talking out of my ass here but uh, that's what I think on it on the topic at the moment but if you play the Germans you have to play more uh, defensively and let the enemies come to you because you're usually heavily outnumbered and then you can use your superior uh, guns and armament to take them out quite easily when they haven't got any cover if you're playing the Russians you really have to stick together and it's the same deal if you're playing the Americans because for example if your average T-34 gets into a one-on-one -on -one with a Yak Tiger I mean the T-34 won't even be able to penetrate the rear arm of a Yak Tiger probably so you really have to have lots of Russian tanks attacking one or two German tanks to have it balanced and it usually works out quite well but I've had quite a few games too where the matchmaker just really did not work and spe uh, I'm specifically talking about a game that I had on Erlenburg uh, which was the scenario for Ardennes offensive and I just had like six Tigers against six Hellcats I think and I mean it's quite clear who won that game they still have to tweak it a lot but I think as I said that it's got a lot of potential and interestingly um, in the historical battles if you enter an historical battle you cannot use the fully elited version with the best modules of a tank you have to use the modules that were actually used at that time on that specific tank so for example if I would enter this game here uh, the Ardennes offensive with my Tiger 1 then I would not be allowed to use the 
8.8 centimeter KWK 43 L71 gun because that gun was never used on the Tiger 1. That gun was used on the Tiger 2, but not on the Tiger 1 in the Second World War. So the gun you get is this quite underwhelming 8.8 centimeter KWK 36 L56, which is not very good. It's the gun that the tier 6 German medium and heavy tanks get and it really is not a very good gun. It's not very good at tier 6 and it's really bad at tier 7. So yeah, I mean if you go up against SU-152s it's alright because SU-152s haven't got that much armor. But generally if you think that you can for example jump into a Jag Tiger and just kick everybody's ass you will be mistaken because also the Jag Tiger for example doesn't get its top equipment. You do not have to specifically mount the equipment that you need to uh, participate in a historical battle because what you basically do is you just hit the battle button and your tank will be automatically loaded up with the right modules and you, you also have to prepay for the ammunition that you're going to use and the ammunition is exactly the same or close to what it was historically and the way it works is that you have to use it and that you have to pay for it in advance and then the cost of ammunition that you didn't fire is given back to you after the battle and this is quite interesting because it means that like every tank in the game will be firing some premium ammunition at some point or at least they have got some premium ammunition but you cannot just load up full premium ammo and just uh, derp your way through the, through the game you know you have to have skill and you have to use your ammunition wisely because in most tanks you only get two or three rounds of premium ammo yeah I, I think that's a really good aspect to the game and another thing that's interesting is that you're not allowed to platoon in historical battles and I think that's fair too because if you think of it you get games for example on Lake Balaton where you've only got three players on the German side and maybe six on the Russian side and if those three players on the German side were, would be a free tank platoon against six randomly chosen uh, players on the Russian side then it's quite clear who would come out on top because the German team could just really coordinate its moves really well and uh, that's why I think it's really good that they haven't included platoons and uh, one interesting thing too is that because the modules are kind of given to you without you having to research them for example if you are playing a stock tiger which is a nightmare or you know some other tank stock and you do not want to play at stock then you can just play historical battles till you've got enough experience to unlock the better modules. Because most tanks in historical battles are either stock or not fully upgraded, if you've only got the stock equipment or you yourself have not got the top equipment because the historical battle layout of your tank uh, doesn't allow you to have it, then you will still be able to have an impact on the game because guns firing back at you won't be top guns either so yeah that's quite cool and I think that they're probably going to add more scenarios in later patches or even even in the next build of a test server maybe because yeah they're probably going to change the scenarios around a lot and uh, also add new ones and take some away and stuff so yeah I've been babbling on quite a lot now about these historical battles and how amazing this patch is so probably you're all sitting there in front of your screens yelling that I should get started with some gameplay so yeah that's Let's head in and see what this patch is all about. So, um, this game here is just supposed to quickly show where historical battles still need improvement. This is the um, this is the Ardennes offensive scenario, and if you look at the matchmaker, we can see that there are one, two, three, four, five tigers in the Panzer IV H against five Hellcats and a Jackson, and um, I really do not see where this game is balanced because seriously I mean basically we've got five tier seven tanks against five tier six tanks and then another tier five tank against the tier six tank so this is basically really unfair and just all our tigers are just loading HE and saying okay this is going to be a real rant and um, yeah I I just really do not see uh, how this here is supposed to be balanced and this is so far really the only historical battle uh, that I had that was really unbalanced for others have been but the fact that stuff like this can still go wrong shows that we still have to do a lot of work on their historical battles. Now at this point I want to quickly apologize for my dodgy frame rate if only got 27 frames at the moment but um, I just really wanted to give you the, um, the full experience of the graphics and stuff 
And you can see that uh, how how much more detailed the shadows are now. And like for example, even if I drive beneath this tree here, you can see the shadows going over my tank, which is really nice. Now I didn't have that big an input in this game, and I'm not really showing it to you to show off my great tiger skills. Uh, the reason why I'm showing you this game is to uh, yeah, just to show how the historical battles are still kind of a bit unbalanced in some situations. So you can see we only lost our Panzer uh, 4H and in turn we were able to take up the entire enemy team within like two seconds really. Uh, two minutes, sorry. Uh, and yeah, and I hope that just showcased to you what historical battles are like sometimes if the matchmaker goes wrong. But I've still got two other great games I up for you guys that were a lot more fun and in which the teams were actually more or less balanced. So that's headed. So this is the second game I wanted to show you and um, yeah this is exactly the same scenario as the last one but this time we're on the American side and it's a lot more balanced now because we've got four Hellcats and two Jacksons against a Tiger II, a Panther and a Yak Panther. Now first of all I was considering going to the left side but then I saw that the majority of our team uh, is heading over to the right flank and I decided to accompany them because really I think that you have to stick together in these team battles if you uh, are on the uh, team that's got the higher numbers but less firepower like in this case for Americans so you could see me going and chat stick together because uh, it would be really it would be better probably if those two guys over there would accompany us or at least one of them would and the other one would just get vision on that flank still uh, our lineup is quite all right here and we have to be careful because for example the Hellcat as you can see here has not got the top equipment you only get the 76 mm AT gun which is basically a modified tank destroyer version of the gun that you get on the tier 5 Sherman so it really is not much good so right there you could see some nice effects of uh, me driving through that little um, shed there and now you'll see some more effects when I drive through these fences now what I was saying is that with this gun that the Hellcat has got uh, the penetration is really lacking so if we mouse over we can see that we only get 128 millimeters of penetration with AP ammo and with the premium ammo we only get 177 which is even with premium ammo it's barely enough to go through the frontal armor of a Tiger II so we have to be really careful here. Now it appears that none of the enemies have actually gone down this way so one of our Hellcats has already gone down and we now know whereabouts the enemies are, they're probably at the, yeah, they're over there at the C2, D2 area. And, um, let's see if we can get some shots in it. Oh, that Yak Panther's got his ass pointed towards us. First shot in, and now he's turning around. Oh, he's trying to retreat. That shot bounces, I'm not quite sure why. Um, and there's the Tiger 2 spot, so they're all focused in one area. And that's quite good now, because we've got tanks on both flanks and we can kind of close in on them. So we're all getting into position and I think it's really decisive to show teamwork in these uh, in these uh, historical battles. I think it's far more important than random battles and I think that if your team works together like we are doing right here uh, then you can achieve a lot more than uh, a team that doesn't work together in uh, historical battles because the fact that for example we have are uh, heavily outgunned by the enemy uh, means that if we do not work together and everybody just suicides on, uh, by, his, by himself we'll just die one at a time and we won't be able to take the enemies down. Now this panther here is out position because he went uh, to kill one of our Hellcats which um, leaves us to deal with a Tiger II who is now isolated and we're closing in on him from three sides and this is some really good teamwork here. Now you can see me loading some premium ammunition and I tell my teammates wait because I'm not quite in position yet but the Jackson goes in anyway. I auto aim at the Tiger which in retrospect wasn't very clever to do really. And that's my first shot. And now I try to carousel him, but I forget that the Hellcat's got really bad turret traverse. I donk my second shot absolutely stupidly there. 
and the uh, tiger takes out my Amorak. So I think I've got time to take a snapshot at the slow glaciers. But that allows him to get another shot into my ass, leaving me on very, very low health. And that was some very stupid play from me there, actually, because I took a lot of unnecessary damage. But now there's three of us against that panther there. And, yeah, if we don't play totally stupidly, we should be able to win against him. And it looks like the Jackson actually gets the 90mm gun, if I'm not mistaken. So, probably playing the Jackson is a lot better idea than playing the Hellcat in these historical battles. So, anyway, uh, I hope that showcased the value of teamwork, especially in historical battles. I mean, teamwork is important in any kind of battle, but I think it's going to be especially important in historical battles. And I hope that just showcased that. I've still got one last game for you that was my best uh, historical battle up till now. And it was in the mighty... Panzerkampfwagen 6 Tiger. So this is the last game I'm going to show you today and it's the Germans against uh, the Russians and we've got, let's see, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 Tigers against 4 SU-152s, 2 KV-1Ss and a T-70. So the T-70 will be feeling very unlucky and this is pro Karovka, so it's the Battle of Kursk. And you might think, oh, they've got KV-1S, well, they've got big guns, but that's not quite right, because the KV-1S gets some kind of, I think, gets a 76mm gun or something uh, in the uh, in the historical battle mode, so it's really useless, actually, against the Tiger, more or less. So, if you think the KV-1S will be able to deal out 390 damage per shot, you will be mistaken. Now, the SE-152s use the 152mm Derp Howitzer, and uh, they've got quite a big bunch of, uh, quite a big load of HE rounds. So I have to be careful because if they get a good angle, they will be able to penetrate me usually. Uh, so yeah, I have to be very, very careful here. So you can see loads of enemies bouncing off my armor, and there's the first SE-152. So don't forget that I'm not using the top gun on this tank. I'm actually using the L-36, I think. Um, anyway, the tier 7 gun, so the second best gun in this tank, which actually is not very good because it only gets 130mm of penetration. Well, I think 132, if that's a check. Uh, yeah, we get 132, so it's not very good. And there's the KV-1S, you can see he's very much stock. So our first shot penetrates. And what I find is that uh, if you're playing historical battles, you can play very, very differently than if you would play uh, a random battle, for example, because there are a lot less tanks around. And, for example, if I was playing a random battle in my Tiger, I would never go to this position because I would be exposing myself to so much enemy fire. But in this situation, I think this position is really good in historical battles. So I pick up my first skill on the KV-1S, and now I'm going to work for the SU-152. And I penetrate, and the... Uh, Tiger one gets him straight after me. So the score's three to one. I, I to be honest, this matchup isn't really balanced either, is it? I mean, they really still have to put a lot of work into this. So I fire off one shot at the T70, getting him in his rear drive wheel, tracking him. He uses a repair kit because he hasn't got one anymore now. But a second shot at him, very very unlucky low roll. They usually would have been able to one shot him six out of ten times or something. So that's a real shame. That shot, I think, fit for SE-152's gun mantle, probably. So I'm going to uh, fire up this one now. 201 damage. And I'm just going to blind shot him now. So there's the T-70 again. I'm going to try to get him this time. Because the T-70 is getting vision for the SE-152's on my ally. So that shot was very much clutch, so it didn't hit. So let's see if we can get him this time. Very close shot, but we make it happen, getting the second kill. So if an above average damage we could get this SU, but it doesn't happen. So uh, we're on two kills right now, and we've only got two enemies left. But I mean, this could still really go either way, because we've got only three Tigers against two SU-152s. And I, I really would have thought that this game would have been more one-sided than it was. So that shot again was quite clutch. So I decide to ignore that guy and go for the other SC-152. I think I kind of know about where he was, so I fire off two blind shots, then I go back into cover. And that Tiger 1 just get, got hit for 416 damage, so I wouldn't like to be him. 
And now we're advancing. Uh, the tiger won. My ally tells me to advance, and I agree with him. So I'm trying to rush towards this dip to get to kind of get the cover from their guns. But then I spot this SC-152 here and decide to fire a shot. So yeah, now it's quite clear who's going to come out on top of this game. And even with a um, with a penetrating hit, usually the SC-152 should be able to one shot me now anymore. But with an above average damage roll, he could, so I have to be careful. And there's our second hit. Angle my armor. And, oh, that one hurt. It didn't penetrate, but it still did lots of damage. And come on, one last shot and he's down. Yes, that's it. Three kills. Very nice game there. Score 74 at the end. And, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed playing that game, and I hope you did watching it. I think it really showed that um, the Russians, even if it looks in the first few minutes like they've got no chance because of their lineup, they can actually still have a chance because in the end we only had two tanks left. And I think it also, also showed that you can use different tactics in historical battles that you couldn't use in random battles. Like, for example, the positions I took. You can be a lot more aggressive in your Tiger, for example. And, yeah, I think that's really good. And I think if you get a team in historical battles that works together really well, then it will be able to take down the enemy team really reliably. Because I think historical battles are all about teamwork, really. So let's check out the post-game stats of that one to see how good exactly it was. So, we managed to get 43,485 credits and 1,369 experience. And in the team score, we came first on the entire team in damage dealt, kills and experience, picking up 913 experience. So this was the best team battle I fought so far. And on the enemy team, we can see that, well, they did quite well, actually. This SC-152 managed to pick up 4,011 uh, 4, damage and 3 kills and 600 uh, experience for a defeat. So he must have felt quite bitter about that. And the other two SC-152s actually played quite well, too. But uh, the other uh, four tanks on their team did contribute to uh, winning the game at all and that's why they lost so yeah quite good performance from the enemy team actually which is quite surprising in the detailed report screen we can see that we fired 27 shots which 19 connected and 18 penetrated which is quite surprising actually considering that our gun has got that bad penetration we dealt out 2286 damage which is quite a lot actually and uh, received nine hits of which only three penetrated and six didn't but still we received quite a lot of damage because of uh, splash damage done to us by the high explosive rounds of SC-152s. We damaged 7 enemies, destroyed 3 and also picked up 764 assistance damage which is quite nice. Now uh, I just want to say something to the experience and credits that you can get in historical battles and that is what I think that in historical battles you cannot pick up as much credits and experience and on average as in uh, random battles because there is not that much to shoot at now obviously you could argue that because there are less tanks on your team you will be doing a higher proportion of your team's damage on average but still I've made the experience that I usually get more experience and credits when I play random games and maybe that's just because I'm not used yet to playing historical battles but I think if you really want to grind out experience and credits uh, you will still be playing random battles and historical battles won't be able to fully replace random battles but uh, but I think historical battles will be more like kind of a thing that you do for fun and just because you want to have kind of like the historical aspect of the game but I don't think that's going to be the central element of the game so still I think that adding historical battles to World of Tanks is a great improvement and I think it's really good that they finally came around to doing it I'm definitely going to be playing going to be I'm definitely going to be playing historical battles on the live server and um yeah, for uh, the summary to the entire 9.0 patch, let's quickly go back to the garage. So that was more or less all to patch 9.0 and I must say I really like the look of this patch. It's probably the second best patch ever except for 
the physics patch in my opinion and I really like the fact that they've worked on a lot of graphical tweaks and improved the gameplay actually and stuff and haven't added any new tanks in the last few patches and I would really like to see uh, that kind of uh, uh, philosophy going on in the next few patches throughout 2014 because I really didn't like the way they uh, kept adding new tanks over new tanks and you just really, you had barely gotten used to one tank and then a new tank line was added. And, uh, you know, it just, and then, you know, people started throwing terms like power creep around, which I think uh, looking at the Waffentrager E100, for example, is quite legitimate to use. And, um, yeah, I I really like the fact that they've kind of come down, calmed down a bit with the pace of adding new tanks. And I think adding new tank lines is good. But I think they should maybe only add three or four new tank lines in a year. Uh, please let me know in the comments what you think about patch 9.0. Do you think that's as amazing as I do? Uh, do you miss new tank lines? Do you think there should be more new tank lines added? Do you disagree with my opinion on adding new tanks or do you agree? And uh, what do you think about the new graphical improvements? Do you think they're good? Or uh, what do you think about the historical battles? Are they balanced? Or uh, do you think they still have to improve something? And what do you think they have to improve? Please let me know in the comments. And uh, thanks for watching as usual. I hope I see you out there on the battlefield. Maybe even on the test server. Or in one of my next videos. Bye-bye. Uh,